There are three stages to romantic love. The first is called lust. Now, the interesting thing about lust is it can strike you at any time, sometimes when you least expect it, and even more so when you're trying to avoid it. You'll be somewhere public, kind of minding your own business, eating or studying or what have you, and suddenly, there it is. The reason we experience lust is simple. You see a human being who seems like a potential mate, and your body immediately starts to experience a craving for sex. Now, this doesn't mean you're going to start humping things, but it does mean you're just interested. And once you've made contact, it takes between 90 seconds and 4 minutes for your brain to decide if it's attracted or not. You feel excited, like you have to know more about this person. But the real fun starts when you make it out of lust and into stage 2, the attraction phase. Most people know this phase as romantic love, which they typically describe as being pretty intense. You feel dazed, feelings of euphoria, excitement. People in this stage are always checking their cell phones even though they just checked them five seconds ago, that type of stuff. They can't eat, can't sleep, can't concentrate on work or anything else because every moment that they're by themselves, they feel like they're just waiting until the moment that they get to see their sweetheart again. And their brain rewards them for seeing that person. Different chemicals fly around and they start to become trained, addicted, like a drug, to another human being. And the lucky ones will make it all the way through that phase until it becomes something completely different. To where losing that person would feel strange, like losing a limb. To where you'd just be comfortable having that person around forever. And that phase is called attachment. The first time that we met each other, I believe was, we were in school, we were probably about 16 years old, and um, I had a friend, he introduced me to Angie and we went out on a date and we went to a drive-in movie. movie. I remember the first time Warren came uh, to take Andy out and uh, he, he's really good looking and he's really nice and when he came to the door, I said to him, yay. <laughs> we liked him right from the very beginning. There's this doctor named Helen Fisher who said people weren't built to be happy, they were built to reproduce. And on a chemical level, that's essentially what love is. Romantic love. It's a, you know, sort of the body's way of searching for a partner. So when you pass through lust and you enter that second stage, that attraction stage, there are three major chemicals rushing through your body. There's serotonin, norepinephrine, and dopamine, all of which are working together to give you this sort of love-struck sensation you hear people talking about. You just wait for that, that two seconds, the, the, the two minutes, or the half hour you guys decide to talk and chit-chat. You see the person and your heart starts beating faster and you don't know what to say and you try to think in your head of, what question can I ask and it doesn't sound too stupid. Like butterflies and like you just, everything is like better when you're with that person. Helen Fisher did this experiment where she took people, college students who were in love and showed them a picture of their sweetheart and then she showed them a picture of a regular person who they didn't have much of a relationship with and monitored their brain activity when they saw this picture. When people saw pictures of, of the person they loved, their brains literally lit up. Fisher called it a sprinkler system for dopamine because they were, they were being drenched with this chemical that causes feelings of, of extreme energy and happiness. He would um, sometimes just invite me for dinner and he would cook like an amazing meal. It was just natural, just natural for Just flowed. Oh, we've got probably boxes this size of letters. I think I write Andy every single day in the army, in the military, and probably every single day that I was overseas. And she wrote back to me. There was no computers, there was... We knew, we knew this was the one because the relationship just, um, you know, they were really, really young. And uh, it, it was, they were together all the time after that. We, we have just like millions upon millions of nerve cells that when stimulated they start mass producing dopamine and, and shooting it off to different areas of the brain. 
And the interesting thing about this is that it's the exact same area of the brain that's becoming active when a person feels the rush of, say, like alcohol or cocaine. I think we knew all along that we were going to get married. It was just a question of when. And he said, listen, old man, I'd like to marry your daughter. <laughs> no, he just he came and said that he wanted to marry her. They wanted to get engaged. They wanted to get engaged. And we said, well, do you have our blessing? It's actually really scary. It's, it's a scary thing to think that, that a romantic love is actually like a form of addiction. And it, it, the survival of our species depends on it. But you know, so while chemically the, the two things are, are similar, romantic love is, it's, it's an important thing. It's important that we fall in love. And it, it's important that we experience that lifelong companionship because it's, it's just human.